Okay. Um, Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Melissa Levine uh, with Leeds Referral Network and Leeds Referral Network is a business uh, networking uh, company and we actually have uh, now branched out into having different chapters within uh, Leeds Referral Network and uh, excited uh, we have some of our, our members now that are gonna be leading up chapters uh, like Anthony is gonna be uh, leading up the Marysville area, yay, and uh, Tiffany, Seattle, so, um, and Deanna, we've been chatting about some cities in your neighborhood, so that's really exciting. I'm so excited that uh, Leeds is going to be uh, branching out, so uh, I know we all had to kind of make some decisions with our businesses when COVID happened, and so uh, COVID actually has helped my business because uh, it was kind of on the down slide of possibly closing. And so now with this virtual COVID, it's really given Leeds an opportunity to grow. So it's, it's really exciting. And I want to thank all my members for being there for me. I would not be right here today without you. So thank you so much. So um, just want to highlight my members. So if you could all can kind of do a wave. And uh, we're going to start with some introductions. And um, just a quick, because uh, we have the wonderful Misha with us today as our guest speaker, which I'm excited about to hear you. Uh, I heard you talk at uh, one of the Northwest Ladies in Business events, and I've just been so excited to have you speak since then. So uh, <laughs> awesome to have you. So we'll just do a few uh, short introductions so that we can have more time in the breakout rooms for the speed networking. Um, so just quick business name and your name and uh, what city in your uh, what city you're in. Uh, as this is virtual now, uh, we we want to uh, notice where you are because again, like I said, we're starting chapters all over. Um, so I would like to hopefully direct you to a chapter in your neighborhood uh, so we can build these communities up and support each other and one another because uh, my Leeds mission is, you know, to support community, support small businesses. And hello, Sunny. Hello, Sue. Hi, welcome. Uh, so yeah, we were just introducing. So uh, do you want just a quick name business and where and where you're at? JD. Uh, JD with J Donovan Smith Creative, where we give businesses vis visibility through video marketing. And I'm in Everett, Washington. Tiffany. Tiffany, I'm Tiffany Goff with Edward Jones. I'm in Seattle and I'm a wealth manager. Awesome. Sue. Hey, Sue Charles. Um, Optimal health and wellness right now. Uh, I'm in Edmonds, but I'm virtual everywhere. <laughs> Deanna. My name is Deanna Siegel. I'm with KRKO and KXA Radio in Everett and uh, obviously virtual too. So we can also, you can download the app and so you can listen to us from anywhere. <laughs> you're, so you're, you're all over. Awesome. I love that. Anthony. I'm doing that right now. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Anthony L. Church with Legal Shield Services, where we provide legal service and privacy management. And I am in Marysville. Sunny, hello. Hi, this is Sunny with We Honey Do. We do what your honey won't. Um, we are pretty much everywhere. We go from Mount Vernon all the way down to Olympia, King, King County, Kitsap County. We're all over the place. So if you need anything done, give us a call. And Misha. Hi, I'm Mika Golbig, uh, Golbig Coaching. I'm a life coach and speaker, and I'm in Seattle. Seattle, awesome. All right, Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany and Misha, Mika. So it's a Mika. Okay, I've been saying your name wrong. I'm so sorry. There, there are like 17 variations, so don't worry yeah. about it at all. <laughs> I love it when people call me Melissa. I'm like, that's totally fine. Melissa, I love it. <laughs> Hello, my Lisa. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Just doing a quick was on intro. Call, so I was trying to hurry off the call, but anyway, so thank you. Oh, you want to say who I am? 
Yeah, just a quick intro and where, okay. what city you're in. Okay, I'm in Linwood, Washington, but I serve people all over the world and through Young Living. So I will tell people individually more as I meet you. So, and I will go blank for a minute, but I'm here listening because I'm so excited to hear, um, you know, it's Micah that's speaking today, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I'm excited. So I'm here. Don't mind my blank thing. I need to just adjust some lighting and get my chair and all that. So yeah. Yay. Awesome. Just going to do a quick intro then for our speaker. Uh, born and raised in Germany, uh, Mika excels at supporting professionals who strive to level up and overcome what holds them back. Nice. I love that. Tapping into their full potential, both for their own and their company's benefit. With Go Big Coaching, she helps her clients go big and live their most authentic life. By offering actionable tools and strategies, as well as her signature straightforward approach. Having run her own successful corporate communications business for over 20 years, Mika has since established herself at the, at the nexus of life and business coaching, as she believes that, com that companies can thrive best when their employees do too. Uh, now a Seattle-based certified coach, speaker, and um, published author, awesome, Mika received her master's degree from the University of Munich, trained with one of Germany's leading executive coaches, and counts executives from various premium car makers, renowned museums, and impactful foundations among her clients. Awesome. Mika, so excited to have you today. So welcome. And I am going to um, mute everyone here quickly while uh, you chat and put you on some speaker view. All right. Go ahead. But leave your cameras on, people, because I would like you to, to give me a show of hand and maybe, maybe share a little after too, or unmute yourself and, and share. Uh, first of all, this is not rosé all day. This is actually hibiscus tea. Just like <laughs> I've had that earlier today. It's like, no, no, <laughs> not drinking yet. Um, actually not drinking at all. So um, I suggested that uh, for a short talk, let's talk about perfectionism. Um, who would say they are a perfectionist? Hmm? I'm a recovering one. Yep, so about half of you. How's, how's that working for you? I don't think I am, but I've been told I am. Yeah. I don't think we notice it if we are. Depends. Depends. <laughs> some, some do, some. Uh, you, might, you might hit a wall where you just suddenly realize that this is what's uh, holding you back. And yeah, perfectionism, as long as it doesn't hold you back or as long as it doesn't hurt you, fine go ahead right then ch don't change anything but for most of us there's the point where perfectionism really keeps us back and what might resonate with you my perfectionism really got to that point where i realized i have to unlearn this that's that's what i'm um my series is an unlearn series so unlearning perfectionism is one of the things i do i realized that when i relaunched my coaching business in the us and um, I was on a budget because I didn't want to channel too much money from my other business over. Uh, my husband is a web designer and I said, nah, we are not, we're not gr great at working together on my things, if you know what I mean, with husband, wife teams. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll do my website myself. And yeah, that was a steep learning curve. I did videos, all kinds of things, all very steep learning curves. And I didn't upload anything because it was, of course, not perfect until I just forced myself because I'm like, this needs to be done. Done is better than perfect. I just need a way for people to find me. That's, that's the main thing. And to this day, the website is what I put together. I have more professional website on my list for, for one day, but actually people kind of like it and uh, they find me. And that's at that point, I'm like, wow. That's actually an interesting technique, half-assing things and getting them done. And so um, I've been very committed to that uh, in a certain respect now, because just like on the, on the, on the, not in the, in the core of my business, of course, right? This is what I do for, this is where my passion goes, 
coaching people and doing talks and workshops. Not that, but writing emails, doing laundry, making dinner. All of these things are on my half-assing list nowadays. Saves me a lot of time. Uh, and especially with the emails, I realized, wow, people don't even see this little mistake. Or I mean, I would have usually spent an hour getting this out. 20 minutes did the trick anyway. Wow. And so that's why I'm so addicted to helping other people unlearn perfectionism too. And uh, what I would encourage you to do instead is focusing on excellence. So um, feel free to unmute you and comment on that. When, when you think about perfect, how does it feel for you? Like this needs to be perfect or I want this to be perfect. How does that feel for you? Unattainable. Unattainable, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Time consuming. Mm -hmm. Time consuming, yeah, yeah, of course, because, right, you nitty gritty, it's going on and on. You reach 90%. Yeah. You miss working outside of the box. Yeah, exactly, that too. Uh, because perfectionism is fear based, so you go with uh, what you know. How about excellent? How does excellent feel or sound? Excellent, excellence. Yeah, I like that because it's more like you did your best, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like what I tell my kids, you know, I'm not expecting perfect. Just do your best. Try, right. try your hardest and that's all you can do, right? And that's yeah. perfect to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's a huge difference. Anybody else? Excellence, how does that feel? It's intentional. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Good, Anthony. Intentional? Intentional, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you have to choose it because excellence doesn't happen, you know, by accident. You have, yeah. to, you have to choose to put, put forth that effort. Yeah. So it's a deliberate choice, but it also feels good, right? Because it's intentional. Mm -hmm. It can be done. Right, it is, it is you're excellent today and next year you've done your job one year longer then you're excellent is probably a different one than today or it's probably a very different one than it was 10 years ago. Um, when maybe when you started out. So that is really the huge difference. And uh, Sue said this thing, it's unattain perfect is unattainable because um, we compare. Perfect is never something where we say, oh yeah, that, that's when I was perfect. Nobody ever says that. Everybody says like this person over there. They, they are so perfect, right? Five-year-olds say that. Mm -hmm. Five-year-olds know what they're doing. That is true. Yeah. Little kids say it, but nobody, no adult says, oh, yeah, I did. that was so perfect of me. Nobody. That's always like this person. And they have their self-esteem broken down through the years and yep. turn out like us. Yep. And I see that a lot with my friends who have kids. There's always the perfect mother. Every, every school has the one perfect mother, right? Where you say, how does she do that? She always looks impeccable. There's, there's no spit and chocolate ice cream on the sweater ever and that type of thing. And of course, yeah, those people have their own struggles and they have their own uh, per person they look at for being perfect. So, uh, and the moment we come closer, to what we think is perfect, our brain immediately sets the benchmark up a step. So we actually cannot reach it. It's just like humanly impossible. And that's why, yeah, I'm, I'm German, I'm efficient, I'm pragmatic. If it's totally impossible, skip it. Look at something that you can do and excellence, excellence can grow with you. That's the beauty of excellence. So, um, and what it also does, I like what JD said, perfection is time consuming. And that's something I learned in my communication business in the automotive industry. Um, they spend an amount X of time, like I work for BMW and Porsche and Audi. Um, so they spend an amount X on reaching 90% 90, 90 on a product. And, then, and that's a, and a budget and a time amount. And then just like every 1% after that costs them as much as the 
So at a certain point, they have to decide, are we going to 92%? Are we going to 95%? Because every 1% is now extraordinarily expensive and a huge effort. And that's, that's what we all do when we strive for perfection. We put in that effort uh, that nobody, actually our clients don't even see it anymore at a certain point. I'm not saying half-assing your actual job or doing 50% or 80%, but the moment you get into the 90s, that 1% that costs you hours and hours and hours is not visible anymore to your clients. So that's, where, that's also where we, we get this tendency to uh, procrastinate because we feel so overwhelmed by the perfection we want to achieve that uh, we don't even get started. And that's all the people out there who don't have their we uh, a website for their business because they feel like, ugh, if I have that little one-page website from a theme, that's not good enough. Well, but if they had it, someone might find them. So that's the done is better than perfect approach. And... Uh, so that's, that's a huge difference. The moment you focus on excellence, there's also something else. The moment you focus on excellence, you focus on your actual task. That's a huge difference, right? Excellent is not an, something I have achieved. Excellent is something I'm doing, I'm moving towards, right? I'm doing excellent work. It's not just like suddenly there's this, uh, the result. And that's something when people talk about visualization, visualizing how you do ex excellence, we always think about our result. That's not helpful. Athletes who benefit from visualizing, and, the, and there's many studies uh, that show that they do, they don't visualize themselves getting, getting the gold medal. They visualize themselves running the race. Huh? Athletes visualizing getting a medal won't get them there. Athletes visualizing how they run their race. That's what actually scientifically proven improves their performance. And that's the same for us. It's just not as easy to prove as with a, uh, a runner where you just have to track the time. But it's the same thing. So excellence focus you, focuses you on the task and that's the best you can do. And if you can visualize it too, even better. Bonus points. Bonus points for visualizing. And uh, if you want to be kind to yourself, which I strongly encourage, uh, you build in checkpoints. That's the points where you can please and actually take that, take that minute to say, wow, that is really good. I'm already done with this part of the pro project, for instance. I actually have a, a big glass jar and it says it has a big sticker on it well done Mika it's my accomplishment jar and, it's on, and I throw in pieces of paper that say stuff I've done well yeah. so that's uh, that's something that's super helpful too for your brain to learn um, that you have accomplished something and then pick up a brand new hobby Pick up something you're not good at. That's the best way to get out of a perfectionist mindset. Pick up something you really suck at. But that's fun. Something fun that you're really not good at. I'll leave it at that. Instead of talking for another, I don't know, hour or two about it. But I hope those were a couple of helpful tips to get you started on this journey. And if you need to if you want to hear more, just uh, contact me. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I'm curious, yeah. <laughs> what was that last one? You just throw it in. What's behind, okay, I can get what's behind doing something fun to distract mm -hmm. our brain. And that could be a variety of things. I, when I do something fun, I don't worry so much whether I'm good at it or not, but you said do something you really are bad at. I'm curious about that one, that, because it seems like if one's kind of just struggled with getting past the perfectionism, I, it might 
carry into what I'm doing next because it takes a while to dispel that stuff. So that's why I'm curious, fun mm -hmm. versus bad, not bad fun, but you know yeah. what I mean, something you're bad at and have fun. So I'm like, huh? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for that question. Yeah, the, uh, that's exactly the idea to say, oh, wow, learning, learning something you can be fun. I know, I know I'm really not good at, um, and it can be, I don't know. Has anybody ever said, oh, I'm just not an artist? Anybody? I'm not an artist? Yeah. I mean, we are all artists. We are all creators, right? And still, and then I said, oh, I'm a writer, but not, I'm, I'm not a visual person. All, all BS, right? I mean, I don't have to win the next art award, but uh, just, just the going to, let, let's say one thing I sometimes do, not now, of course, is going to one of those um, sip and paint nights with friends. I don't sip, but I paint. And, um, and it's kind of first I thought like, oh God, that's a typical thing for middle-aged women to do. Yeah, true. But it's a typical thing because we have fun. So fine, right? And nobody's really that good at it. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. That's what I, that's what I'm getting at to say, hey, this can be total fun without the pressure of always trying to be perfect and learning something new. Awesome. Oh my gosh. It. Thank you so much, Mika. That was wonderful. Awesome information. Um, so yay. So we are going to get into the speed networking. Uh, first, we have to say hello to Matilde. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hola. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who have uh, not done the speed networking, um, what you're going to want to do is go to the bottom of your screen once I open up the rooms and click join and uh, stay in your rooms. And I'm going to, after four minutes, uh, rotate you around so that you'll have a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with everyone in this meeting. And uh, so we have four minutes. Uh, so two minutes, uh, one person uh, shares, and then the other two minutes, the other person shares. So uh, would love to uh, go in with intention to these uh, breakout rooms. Uh, we all introduced ourselves. We all kind of know a little bit about our businesses. So um, have the intention of asking the question of uh, how, how can I help you? What are you looking for? What is your best client? Uh, what is, you know, what is your niche? Uh, how do you, you know, zoom in on who are you looking for? So, all right. Well, thank you everyone again for coming. And uh, hopefully every, we should be able to get through this uh, by three o'clock. So um, hopefully everyone can stay on. And uh, also just wanted to uh, let you know as well that I'm going to stay on after. If anyone has any questions about uh, the membership or anything, I can go over that with you. So um, have fun, everyone. And uh, we're at an odd number. So uh, Matilde, if you want to stay on and chat with me for a little bit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're at an odd number, so.